Coming up in this episode of my Total War Attila Picks campaign, we utterly destroy the Huns. Too slow. Oh man, look at that! Axe to the neck. And then we hit him with more Onager fire, hit him with more flaming bolt shots from the, uh, the crossbows, and watch him burn up. Dirty. This is, there's a guy up here in the middle, gets it right in the gut. Just watch. Right here, this guy. Ready? Do it. Oh, Jesus. Wow. He wrecked him. Hold back. Oh my god, we're obliterating him. Jesus. Holy crap. And watch him on the retreat. Oh my god. Like I said, yes, hacking horses to bits. Mainly infantry. This is their only unit. Those chosen Ua warriors, and we obliterate them. Just watch this. Ba boom! We messed them up. Get wrecked. You are a, a hero. A, a man among men. God among men. Epic. Highlight reel. Stay tuned, guys, for my vlog style episode zero intro. Guys, Unite the Clans here, coming back at you with a brand new episode zero. You know how we do on this channel. When I bring out a new series, I like to start it all off with an episode zero. I introduce you to the game, talk about where I want the series to go, and we play a little bit of it. Problem is, this one is kind of late. Uh, I'm two episodes in to my campaign in Total War Attila as the Picts. And I haven't managed an episode zero. I didn't want to just forget about it. So I figured I'd do it now, belated as it is, uh, and bring that to you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen my uh, uh, episode zeros, like I said, they introduce you to the game. This one is Total War Attila. The franchise has been around now for 15 years. Uh, it comes from uh, Creative Assembly. Uh, and they're known for their uh, games, the prior games in this series, the Medieval series, the Shogun series, the Rome series. Uh, Creative Assembly has made some amazing Total War games. One problem I had with all the ones in the past, though, is that they spanned vast swaths of history, hundreds of years. What I love about Total War Attila is how condensed it is. It covers basically the lifespan of one man, Attila the Hun, and uh, shows you how the world changed during his lifetime. And boy, did it change. Uh, the migrations brought about by Attila uh, and his, uh, his hordes shaped Europe for centuries to come. Uh, it's pretty obvious why, but just about every Total War YouTuber I'm into has a university degree in history. Uh, the two seem to go hand in hand. I also have a degree in history. I'm kind of cut out to be playing this game on YouTube. Uh, now, I could go into a 40-minute vlog essay off the top of my head about what was happening in the world at that time and uh, the implication, implications and ramifications of uh, Attila the Hun's campaign of conquest. But you guys don't really want to see that. We want to get down to the action, so I'm just going to talk about uh, the game, the, the factions that are in the game. You've got the two halves of the Roman Empire. It had, in a few years before the start of the game, become divided. You now have two empires, two senates, two emperors, uh, and <clears throat> the empires are weak. Their economies are struggling, and they can no longer protect their borders. The years prior to this game... The Roman Empire had used federati to protect their borders. Those are represented by the great migrators and the new kingdoms in the game. Uh, Franks and uh, Ostrogoths and Vandals were all uh, under the employ of Rome to protect its borders. But with the uh, arrival of the Huns from the east, those tribes were pushed deeper into a Western Europe deeper into Roman territory, and conflict began to arise. You've got uh, the Sassanid Empire as well in the east, vast economic and cultural civilization. Uh, you have the precursors to Viking cultures being established in Scandinavia around this time. And in Britannia, you have the rise of Celtic cultures. Uh, they had been put down by Rome 
for generations, but with the weakening of Rome and the slackening of its borders, these tribes are ready to rise up, and that's who we are taking into battle in total war Attila. Our campaign will be as the Picts, with one simple goal, to unite Britannia under a Celtic high king. Uh, I believe there are nine territories we'll have to take over uh, over the course of the game to complete this short campaign. Uh, like I said, this episode's late. I think we've already got three down, so we're one third of the way there. Um, but that's the plan going forward. For episode zero, I want to show you off some of the troops you're going to be seeing in our campaign as we do a battle against the game's title villain, the Huns. We take our Pictish warriors uh, to the hills, line up for a full-on battle with the Hun hordes. That is what's coming up next. Guys, thank you for watching this little vlog-style intro. We're going to get down to the action, but before we do, I'm going to take you to uh, unit selection, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the army that we're bringing you today. Guys, we have gone with... Uh, uh, 10 unique uh, Celtic units. This isn't really a competitive army build. We're playing uh, with small funds and um, I just wanted to give you a cool looking battle. So we're going to be playing in the hills outside Media Lanum of Verona at night uh, in the beautiful summer. Uh, as for the actual uh, units, I've gone with one the Celtic warlord, cheapest general, his heavy melee, heavy melee infantry, uh, decent unit, I guess, for the price. Um, but because the funds are small and I wanted to show you as many as possible, I didn't break the bank on a general. Um, we've also got two kind of frontline units. The Celtic spears are um, the cheapest uh, spear infantry with the spear wall, and the Celtic woodrunners, I believe, are the only melee infantry that. Uh, the pits have that have shield wall um, which is a um, it's an ability I really love uh, I love it if you're playing competitively and I love it against the computer because you get sort of an immovable object something that they just throw their have to throw their troops into while you have time to reposition uh, your counter charge units like for example I think these Pictish berserkers I have not played too much with them but they're tier two uh, for infantry they have a, a solid charge bonus um, their melee attack looks awesome. Armor is pretty terrible, so you don't want these guys taking uh, fire from the enemy or getting charged themselves. You want to get them in a position where they can do the most amount of damage. We went with two skirmisher uh, infantry, the Celtic crossbows, uh, just because I like uh, barbarian uh, crossbow units. These guys have a great rate of fire, uh, which should be nice. And I also went with Celtic skirmishers because we are fighting the Huns, and uh, Javelins tend to do okay against uh, Cavalry. Uh, the Huns, uh, I'll get to their build in a second, but honestly I wanted to show you all some of the Pits units, and I figured what better uh, faction to do it against than the Huns. It's Total War Attila. Um, I went with two units of Cav, uh, just oh, to show them off to you guys. I went with the only uh, melee Cav we have here, the Mormare, uh Cavalry. Uh, tier 2, medium melee calves, they'll probably get chewed up by the Huns because uh, they're just not uh, not fast enough. Uh, speed at 80, I think. All the Huns' horse are faster or the same speed. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll, we'll try and lure those Lancers into a bit of a trap. Uh, I also went with their cheap uh, Jab Cav Cavalry uh, Raiders uh, just because... Um, the Huns have skirmisher cab of their own, and uh, I think it would be silly for us not to bother to bring any to try and chase them off with. Um, we've also got uh, the Wolfhound Spearman. I can't imagine this unit is going to make back its money. It costs four fifty, uh, and you just don't get very many men for the money. But we'll uh, we'll give them a go, and we'll see. These are the most elite of the uh, dog troops, and because it's a night battle, and I want it to look good. I went with the Celtic Onager. We're going to throw Flame Shot on there and just let it launch across the battlefield at these uh, these heathen Huns. Uh, so let's um, let's get this thing going. Um, I'll give you a quick glance at the Huns' units. We got the Step Chieftain, uh, the Chosen Uar Warriors, who are tremendous. 
I don't have to worry about them, but that's really the only melee infantry, so, um, if we can avoid getting picked to death by, uh, their, their cav, and really it's only the one skirmisher cav, I feel like we should be okay. If we get these guys to charge into spears or wood runners, yeah, we'll be in decent shape. And they have Uar archers as well, and then, um, uh, one melee cav, one shot cav, and one bow cav. Nothing too heavy. Um, so, there's potential for our, uh, our cavalry to at least be able to to keep us in the game uh, so I think I'm gonna go with brace expecting a charge and I'll have to try and remember to use that in time oh shoot let's just let's just go with rally because I'm better at using that one all right guys let's get this thing going and hopefully uh, there's no issues with the recording The Eternal City. I have seen the end of days. Years from now, men will say, Here began the fall of Rome. Good news, there were issues with the recording. Uh, listen to this uh, epic speech, though. I am happy to say we go to battle. I have chosen to fight this enemy and force them to answer our swords and spears. Pretty epic. Truly epic. I'm impressed uh, with those pre-battle speeches. Uh, the issues weren't really technical, guys. It's just that I did a really bad job talking and doing commentary uh, when I recorded this, so I'm redoing it. Uh, I want to show you uh, my deployment. First, we've got these uh, uh, Warhound troops. Let's see, may the Lord bless us. I think we're pagan. That's annoying in this game. I think there's another point where we talk about St. Peter at the gates. Uh, but yeah, so we've got the, the hounds hidden in the woods there, a little Celtic guerrilla deployment. Uh, didn't do that with the rest of the troops. I actually backed up as far as we can go. We've got the Celtic uh, Raider Cav. We've got our frontline troops. We've got the Mormare Cavalry, the uh, medium melee Cav over here on the right flank. And then um, behind them, I went with... Man, the models look good in this game. The troops look good uh, with the graphics all maxed out. Those are the uh, crossbows on the left flank, right flank. Pardon me. We went with the javelins. Uh, and then... I've got some frontline troops too that I want to talk to you guys about. We've got uh, Celtic Wood Runners, um, my, some of my favorite troops. They're in Shield Wall right now. We've got a fairly thin line of them. I probably should have gone thicker so they could stand up to charge us better. Yay! Uh, and then we've got the Spears down here. Who did that guy just hork? Yeah, yeah. I know Blood and Burning Pack introduced sickness to armies, but. They just have colds and blow snot everywhere. Anyway, they're in spear wall, uh, ready to go. Uh, got that Mormare cav there. Got our general here in the second line, the Celtic warlord. Uh, really cheap, simple troops. I wanted to give you guys as many different troops as possible at this small uh, finance limit. And then some awesome looking troops. Those are the Pictish berserkers. Everybody, axe, tiny shield, beard, ponytail, uh, shirtless with just blue ink tattoos all over their bodies. Those guys are really scary looking. And uh, we got them set up in the back here so we can have them as a counter charge unit. Um, and then just for fun, went with some Celtic onagers. If you are playing a battle, whether it's against the computer and, and pretty easy like I'm doing, or you're playing competitively, don't use artillery in an open field battle uh, it just isn't will never earn back its money but if you're fighting at night and showing people things in cinematic mode and you want the battle to look great uh just stay tuned for how good those onikers look 
they make some of the best footage in this episode. Uh, so in these trees, I showed you already, but I have the, I think they're called the wolf, Celtic Wolfhounds, something like that. Uh, we've got them hidden, used guerrilla deployment, and the idea was to potentially flank uh, the enemy, disrupt a charge, or get into their, their skirmishers. Um, I didn't do the best job. Uh, you'll see in a second. I'm going to take a quick cut here, guys, and uh, we will be right back. All right, Geek's back. Uh, you can see me moving up my skirmishers up front. Those crossbows and those uh, javelin do some work in this level, uh, in this battle. They do some work against the chosen Uar warriors, the just boss troops of the enemies. Uh, so we got them moved up. Uh, you can see my Celtic warhounds here, though. Uh, I moved them up. Uh, I feel like at this point in the battle I had them too deep in the forest, so I tried to move them towards the edge. Uh, this unit ends up getting just chewed right up. Uh, it's not their fault. Uh, I tried to kind of lure out uh, some javelins with my uh, my cavalry. Uh, the I think it's the devil cavalry that the Huns have uh, have javelins, and I thought you know maybe we can get those out of the way um, and uh, absorb some of those. So you can see on the left my troops moving up. Those are the uh, Celtic cavalry raiders. The, uh, the Jav Cav, uh, and I do a decent job. Like, they definitely survive the onslaught of javelins. I got them moving at a nice slow pace towards the enemy here, maybe trying to lure somebody out. And you can see just those javelins miss. Uh, they hit shields, they don't do too much work. Uh, but I leave these guys in there a little long, and uh, when they send their troops charging after me, I'm a little too slow. Oh man, look at that! What did I tell you about that looking so good? I mean, that killed nobody, but it looked awesome. So you maybe see more uh, flame shots in the background. We're getting chased down here, guys. Uh, it's my bad generalship. Apologies. But to make sure I get my cavalry out of there, which is really important uh, if you're fighting a mobile enemy like the Huns, I send in the hounds. I release the hounds. Man, look at that Celtic. I'm gonna go fire. Uh, and the hounds get a bit of a side charge into uh, the first wave lancers, who are the, the shock cav uh, for the huns. You can see that here. Um, definitely disrupts them and lets me get my cavalry away. Yeah, if you're fighting a mobile enemy, you need to keep your cavalry alive. They definitely have the advantage on that front. Where we have the advantage, melee infantry. This is their only unit, those chosen Uar warriors, and we obliterate them. Just watch this. Ba-boom! Jesus. Holy crap. We messed them up. Get wrecked. Look at that blood and burning pack. Just blood missed. There's a guy up here in the middle. Gets it right in the gut. Just watch. Oh, yeah. That's... Oh, no. It's that... Oh. Right here. This guy. Ready? Do it. Oh, Jesus. And then we hit him with more onager fire. Hit him with more flaming bolt shots from the, uh, the crossbows. And watch him burn up dirty and watch him on the retreat oh my god like i said onagers aren't the best choice i played a little game of chicken left my skirmishers in front of my front line uh and the ai just kind of bugged out really they should have charged us uh or moved up in a more cohesive force but now we've got the ur archers moving in on our right we've got the uh cavalry coming at us right down the middle we hit him with some more onagers. Now nah, that looks so good. Uh, we hit him with some of this uh, missiles, and they go straight into the woodrunners. This is why I thought I should have put the woodrunners in a thicker line because they do get through, they do get beat up, uh, but they don't get to do too much damage because I send in these Pictish berserkers, who, by the way, look really stupid when they charge in with their arms up. They look like they're running scared from a ghost or something. It makes no sense. So we got them on the run. I chase them off a little bit, guys, but then you see me kind of hold back. Oh my god, we're obliterating them. Uh, you see me kind of hold back. Uh, another important trick when you're fighting a mobile enemy, don't chase them. I don't follow my own advice, you'll see in a second. I get that Mormare cavalry just obliterated by chasing after the uh, uh, bow cavalry of the Huns, but get back into position and let them come to you. They only have cav and skirmishers right now. Uh, yeah, you can see that right flank. I just got destroyed. So here they come. 
I was not set. I was trying to move my general up to fill in the front line. They did get a good charge on them. Um, and I hold back the, uh, the Berserkers this time. Because I know we got another charge coming in. You can see their uh, Devil Cavalry uh, coming in in wedge formation right now. Uh, I move up again with my cab just to try and chase off those archers. Doesn't do too much. Uh, they all have uh, Parthian shot. Um, but, again, you keep them away. Keep them away from the front lines and, and maybe minimize the damage while you're repositioning your troops. So we're in position now. But I think they end up charging the spear wall uh, on the left flank. Uh, if they don't eat too many Celtic Onager shots. Yeah, so here come the Berserkers. I held them back last time so they could counterattack this charge. And they get right in there. They really do some hacking. Just hacking horses to bits. Yeah, no. We're done. So now uh, that that last bit of melee cav is engaged, I send my melee cav out to chase off some of their skirmishers. I gotta be honest, it doesn't go the smoothest. This is probably my worst move of the battle. Uh, I let that Mormare cavalry just get eaten up uh, by Parthian shots as they chase down the devil archers. There's an epic horse kill. Oh yeah, that was it right there. Just an axe to the horse's neck. Dirty, dirty stuff. Uh, so I reposition once again, but uh, we're in pursuit now. Uh, so I've got the Mormair Cav in pursuit of the Devil Archers. Uh, it doesn't go well. It's a bit of a faded pursuit. Uh, terrain slows me down at one point. I get slowed down by these Ur Archers. You can see some of my horse uh, just outnumbered here. And... Uh, yeah, here's where I, I, I try and follow them through this rough terrain. Definitely, definitely get slowed down. So we just continued the charge, continued to get eaten up by Parthian shot. Uh, and then back over here, I've got my Celtic Berserkers in pursuit of those who are archers. Uh, Pictish Berserkers, sorry, I think they're called. Uh, so we got them on the charge. Uh, they do have a little bit of a tough time catching up though. I end up having to use my uh, my cavalry here uh, to do the dirty work and catch up with those archers. Uh, watch this, guys, watch that archer. He takes a swing, failure, ax to the neck. Hack him to bits. You are a, a hero, uh, a man among men, god among men. Wow, he wrecked him. Just wrecked him. All right, guys, we've switched over to uh, uh, different footage now. This was from my actual recording uh, where I left very boring audio commentary. You can see I've caught up. Uh, it's about, f what, 60 to 50 right now uh, with the Mormare Cav against the Hunnic Devil Archers, but I blow it. I try and pull uh, these these Mormare out to get, like, a, a charge. Uh, and instantly it goes from an even battle to like two to one. In a second you'll see me hover over this and I'm down to like 25 horses from 50, which is what it was a minute ago. Just getting picked apart. Yeah, there's the count, down to 26. Uh, so in a minute these troops will get absolutely routed, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the battle's pretty much over. Uh, it was over as soon as, uh, as soon as we got them to charge into our lines with that last bit of cavalry. So speaking of cav, I send my uh, javelin cavalry, the uh, raiders, which we saved earlier in the battle by sacrificing the hounds. I send them up uh, and they manage to slow down those Uar archers like glue. They get in there uh, and uh, hang them up just long enough for the berserkers to do their dirty work. So you see, they catch up here. Yeah, we're routed in the background over there. They catch up here, the archers turn to fight, and I just pull through uh, with the cav. Make room for these uh, berserkers to to just take care of some business all up in here. Look at that. And they are routed, and I think in a split second, that uh, cavalry in the background routes as well. Matt, we'll call an end to this battle, guys. Uh, guys, Unite the Clans, signing off, saying thank you for watching my episode zero and this victory, including my poor generalship. I will see y'all in the very next episode.